Hello. In this video we'll take a look at a couple of fundamental results on Hilbert spaces. And we begin by defining the concept of orthogonality in an inner product space. And this definition of orthogonality of two vectors is motivated by the property that on Euclidean spaces the angle between two vectors is equal to 90 degrees precisely if the inner product of the two vectors is equal to zero. And we use this property as the basis of our definition on more general inner product spaces and we define the that two vectors x and y are orthogonal if their inner product is equal to zero. Using this concept we can further define the orthogonal complement of a subset M of X, similarly as in linear algebra, to be the set of all vectors in X, which are orthogonal with respect to all vectors in M. The linearity of the inner product implies that the orthogonal complement of M is always a subspace of X, even if M is not a subspace itself, but in many cases it's also very typical to consider precisely orthogonal complements of subspaces. As so our first fundamental result we have that the every Hilbert space can be decomposed into a sum of any one of its closed subspaces and its orthogonal complement. And in this result it's quite important that X is a complete space and further that the subspace M is a closed subspace. The notation of the plus with a circle around it here denotes the so-called direct sum of these two subspaces which is defined as the set of all elements which can be obtained as a sum of two elements y and zeta one from each subspace and in our notation the circle around the plus gives us further information that this is indeed a direct sum, meaning that the intersection of the two subspaces contains only the zero element. And this triviality of the intersection also implies that every element x can be written as a sum y plus zeta with uniquely determined elements y from m and zeta from its orthogonal complement. And even more is true in fact that um, this sum we have here is in fact even an orthogonal sum, meaning that the elements of the two subspaces are always orthogonal with respect to each other. This is sometimes denoted by adding a small uh, perpendicular symbol to the sum, but in it's good to note that in both cases the actual set of elements defined by the sum is in, in fact the same. And the orthogonality in the sum also implies via the Pythagorean theorem that the norm of the element x is always the square root of the sum of the squares of the norms of y and zeta. A couple of further comments are in order here as well. This de decomposition is very much a Hilbert space property and even on Banach spaces it's possible that there exists a closed subspace M such that the space doesn't contain any complementary subspace such that the two subspaces as a sum would fill the whole space and also that the uh, intersection of these two subspaces would contain only the zero element. 
And finally, the orthogonal decomposition of X also shows that for any closed subspace M of X, we can define a orthogonal projection operator corresponding to this subspace quite similarly as in the case of a Euclidean spaces as the mapping which maps an element x of x to the unique element y in this decomposition. As our next main result we have the Reed's representation theorem which characterizes all bounded linear functionals on a Hilbert space. And more precisely, this very important result states that if phi is a bounded linear functional on a Hilbert space X, then there exists a unique element zeta of X such that the values of phi at all points x are obtained as inner products of x with this fixed vector zeta. The element also has the additional property that its norm is the same as the dual space norm of the functional phi. We can sketch the proof of the theorem a bit here and in the proof we can first of all assume that phi is uh, no, not the zero functional because otherwise we can choose zeta to be the zero vector. And in the first part of the proof we let m be the kernel of phi consisting of those elements for, for which the value of phi is equal to zero. And since this is a closed subspace we can use our previous result to decompose the Hilbert space X into the direct sum of M and its orthogonal complement. And to begin our search for a suitable zeta, we can note that this uh, particular element zeta has to have a unique decomposition according to the decomposition of our space. And here X zeta is an element of M and Y zeta is an element of the orthogonal complement of M. And since X zeta is by definition in the kernel of phi, the value of, function, of the functional phi at X zeta has to be equal to zero. However, if zeta also satisfies the condition in our claim, this value of the functional can alternatively be expressed as the inner product between x zeta and zeta. And now using the decomposition of zeta, we can see that this expression is in fact the square of the norm of x zeta by using the orthogonality of x zeta and y zeta. And this means that x zeta has to be equal to zero and the element zeta is in fact equal to its second component y zeta which is by definition in the orthogonal complement of m. And this way we have shown that if we want zeta to have the properties in the claim then zeta must necessarily be in the orthogonal complement of M. And in the next step we can let Y be an arbitrary element from the orthogonal complement of M and with norm equal to 1. And we can now try to choose our element zeta in such a way that the inner product expression of uh, phi in the claim gives us the correct value of phi at the point y0. And since y0 is just a single vector, this is fairly easy to do. And indeed, if we choose zeta 
to be equal to the complex conjugate of the value of phi at y0 times the vector y0 itself, then a direct computation shows that the inner product between y0 and zeta is in fact precisely the value of phi at y0. And this means that the claim holds for this zeta and for this very special particular point x is equal to y0. And in the rest of the proof we show using a very simple but clever inner product calculation that with this exact choice of zeta the value of phi at x is given exactly as in the claim of the theorem at all points in x. Moreover we can also show using a separate but also simple argument that this uh, choice of zeta is in fact unique and that the equality of the norm ho norms hold. And this last step and the conclusion of the proof may seem quite strange since we actually arrived at our choice of zeta after letting y0 to be an arbitrary vector in the complement of m. However, there's a reasonable explanation for this and which is that even though we haven't proved it here, the orthogonal complement of m is actually a one-dimensional subspace which means that it contains only one linearly independent vector and because of this uh, any choice of y0 leads to the same choice of the vector zeta. And it would also be possible to use this additional information more concretely in, the, in proving this rich representation theorem and um, this could be done using a particular additional result which we haven't considered yet but in the way it's presented here the proof can also be carried out based on only the orthogonal decomposition of the Hilbert space. Uh, the Reed's representation theorem has a number of important and useful consequences and first of all it tells us that on a Hilbert space the extended functional in the hahn banach theorem is always unique. This follows directly from the fact that when phi is the appropriate extension it is completely determined by the element zeta in the rich representation theorem which we know to be unique. And similarly the so-called norming function uh, which we obtain as a corollary of the hahn banach theorem is also unique. And for a non-zero vector y a direct computation shows that this norming function corresponds to the vector zeta which is precisely the element y scaled to be to have norm equal to one. And finally the Reed's representation theorem also implies that every Hilbert space is a reflexive space. And indeed in the proof we can utilize the, map, the mapping which relates every bounded functional uh, with the element zeta in the Ritz representation theorem. And by the theorem this mapping is in fact an isometric isomorphism which maps the dual space of x to the space x itself because it preserves the norms and even though it turns out to be an anti-linear mapping instead of a linear mapping, we can use it especially to introduce an inner product on the dual space of X. And the isometric property of this mapping can also be used to show that the dual space of X is complete and therefore a Hil Hilbert space. And because of this, we can apply the Reed's representation theorem on the dual space of x.
and this way we can get a complete description of the elements of the second dual of x and from this we can go on to show that every element of the second dual of x necessarily has the form of an evaluation and therefore x is a reflexive space.